Hey guys, this is Donnie from worldwars.com. I hope you like this video. If you will, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It helps us a lot. We also have a donation link called the Patreon. If you feel like you'd like to donate a dollar a month or whatever you can afford, um, we'd appreciate that as well, but it's not mandatory. We will continue to provide these free videos. August 6, 1945, 75 years ago, a modified B-29 bomber named Enola Gay dropped an atomic bomb named Little Boy on Hiroshima, Japan. Three days later, on August 9, 1945, another B-29 bomber named Boxcar dropped an atomic bomb named Fat Man on Nagasaki, Japan. This is what ended World War II with Japan agreeing to surrender on August 15, 1945, and signed an agreement to surrender on September 2, 1945, with World War II officially being over on September 3, 1945. Who invented the atomic bomb? In December 1938, German Otto Hahn and his assistant Fritz Strassmann discovered nuclear fission, which is basically splitting an atom with another particle causing a massive chain reaction of energy to be released. Word has just come through from Germany by way of Denmark that the German physicists Hahn and Strassmann have just verified that the uranium atom under neutron bombardment actually splits into two parts. A Jewish scientists that escaped from Europe to the United States wrote a letter to President Franklin D. Roosevelt about nuclear fission discovery. And this included Albert Einstein, Enrico Fermi, and Leo Szilard. Here you can see Dr. Leo Szilard. He, along with the next gentleman that you will see, which is Dr. Enrico Fermi, were both working on the chain reaction about for the the atomic bomb and everything and they went to the Department of the Navy who was not didn't show enough interest and weren't going to take it to the president um, President Roosevelt so Dr. Leo Szilard here you can see him with Albert Einstein needed to go to Albert Einstein because he knew he could get to the president and let him know hey Germany figured out fission and you know they're in, they're trying to create a nuclear bomb and the United States needs to beat them to that so Albert Einstein wrote a letter to the president and this caught the president's attention and President Roosevelt received a letter written by Albert Einstein and the other scientists which led him to have a special committee to review the findings. The committee was called the Advisory Committee on Uranium and it was run by Lyman Briggs. With a $6,000 budget to run experiments, the committee met in October 1939 and began running tests and experiments on fission of uranium. It only took the committee a month to report back to President Roosevelt that the fission of uranium while untested had the potential to fuel submarines, but also create an atomic bomb stronger than anything ever known to man. The advisory committee continued experiments, and on March 2, 1940, John Dunning and his team verified Niels Bohr's hypothesis. The hypothesis was that electrons revolve around the atomic nucleus and could jump from one energy level to another. John Dunning discovered that uranium-235 was responsible for fission by slow neutrons and would be the required fuel source for an atomic bomb. In June of 1940, President Roosevelt creates the National Defense Research Committee, NDRC, and he places Vannevar Bush in charge and they merge the Uranium Committee within the NDRC. The budget was increased to $40,000, which is equivalent to $734,000 in today's dollars. On February 25, 1941, plutonium was discovered by Glenn Seaborg and Arthur, and Arthur Wall at the University of California, Berkeley. This would prove useful for the second atomic bomb to be dropped on Nagasaki, Japan. Alright, so now we enter into the Manhattan Project. On December 7, 1941, Japan attacked Pearl Harbor in Honolulu, Hawaii. President Roosevelt stated it was a date which will live in infamy. Presenting the President of the United States. <laughs> Vice President, Mr. Speaker, members of the Senate and of the House of Representatives, yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America 
was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. World War II had started on September 1st, 1939, and due to the attack on Pearl Harbor, the United States officially entered the war on December 7th, 1941. So on December 8th, 1940, the United States and Britain declare war on Japan. And then on December 11th, Germany and Italy declare war on the United States. And then the United States responds and declares war on Germany and Italy. What a roller coaster ride, right? On January 19th, 1942, President Roosevelt authorizes the Atomic Bomb Project, which would be named the Manhattan Project. The United States Army Corps of Engineers is placed in charge of the project, and the Manhattan Engineering District, where they were located, has delegated responsibility for the project. Recently promoted Brigadier General Leslie Groves would be made the director of the project. Four locations become important to the creation of the atomic bomb, which is Oak Ridge, Tennessee, Los Alamos, New Mexico, Chicago, Illinois, and Hanford, Washington. On September 29, 1942, under Secretary of War Robert Patterson authorized the Corps of Engineers to purchase 56,000 acres in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Oak Ridge, Tennessee would be the location where numerous giant spectrometers would be built to separate isotopes from uranium. This will allow them to extract uranium-235, which was needed for the first atomic bomb named Little Boy. Note, gaseous diffusion was discovered to be much easier than using spectrometers and would later be the main method for extracting uranium-235. Stone and Webster, an engineering service company, was placed in charge to build the massive site in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Did you know fact about this? Because of the requirement for so many large spectrometers to be built, it required thousands of workers. This led to Oak Ridge, Tennessee being the fifth largest city in Tennessee. Brigadier General Groves places J. Robert Oppenheimer in charge of the site of Los Alamos, New Mexico. And on October 19, 1942, he would be primarily in charge of bomb design. Mr. Oppenheimer was a physicist and a professor at the University of California at Berkeley. He was known as a very temperamental person, and many were surprised by his by this choice, but Brigadier General Groves had a way of picking the right people for the job, and this proved to be no different. On December 2, 1942, Enrico Fermi built the first nuclear reactor at the University of Chicago. Enrico Fermi successfully tested a self-sustaining nuclear reaction. What's crazy about this is it was done in a heavily, heavily populated area within Chicago, Illinois, but Mr. Fermi was given the go-ahead to conduct the test. Luckily, everything he did was done right, and there was no runaway reactions. On February 9, 1943, Undersecretary of the Army Patterson approved 400,000 acres to be purchased in Hanford, Washington. This would be the site for where plutonium would be produced in large quantities. The plutonium from the Hanford site would be used for the first ever atomic bomb test, as well as the bomb dropped on Nagasaki, Japan, named Fat Boy. Based on my reading about this particular site, nuclear waste was not properly dealt with, and unfortunately is an issue for the surrounding areas even today. Between August and December 1943, both the United Kingdom and Canada joined the Manhattan Project, and allowed their scientists to collaborate with those in the United States. This collaboration was called the Combined Policy Committee, and the committee consisted of United States Secretary of War Henry Simpson, Benever Bush, and James Conant from the United States. The members from the United Kingdom were Field Marshal Sir John Deal and Colonel J.J. Llewellyn, and the single member from Canada was C.D. Howe. Around late November 1944, it was discovered through some documents that Germany had not made significant progress towards developing an atomic bomb, and it was not even a high priority to them any longer. On December 17, 1944, the United States stood up the 509th Composite Group, formed under Colonel Paul Tibbets, to deliver the atomic bomb. Colonel Tibbets and the 509th Composite Group would be stationed in the island of Tinian, which is a small island located 1,500 miles from Japan, a strategic location, and, and it also had the capabilities to modify the B-29 Super Fortress bombers to carry the atomic bombs. Colonel Tibbets knew that if and when the day came that they had to drop the atomic bombs, it would be a day known throughout history. This meant he wanted to name his plane something that would be unique. He decided to name his plane after his mother, Enola Gay Tibbets, 
Major Charles Sweeney was the pilot of the other B-29 Superfortress named Boxcar. The plane was named after Captain Frederick Bach. This probably was, has you wondering why Captain Bach didn't drop the second atomic bomb. Well, the simple answer is Major Sweeney had flown more training and practice missions in the plane, and the fact that this is a military plane and Captain Bach did not own it, he just had the pleasure of being one of the first to fly the plane and getting to name it. On, on April 12, 1945, unfortunately, President Roosevelt died. President Roosevelt was a chain smoker and was suffering from congestive heart failure, among other illnesses. He supposedly had plans to resign after the war ended, but would die just short of that date. His vice president, Harry S. Truman, takes over as president, and then the, Man the Manhattan Project was so secret that President Truman knew very little about it, if anything at all. He had to be briefed in death about the project. President Truman wrote in his diary on July 25, 1945, we have discovered the most terrible bomb in the history of the world. It may be fire destruction prophesied in Euphrates Valley error after Noah and his fam fabulous ark. After Germany's surrender on May 7, 1945, President Truman traveled to Europe for a conference and he hinted to some allies, including Soviet leader Joseph Stalin, about the atomic bomb. But the Soviets were already aware of the bomb through espionage. They knew about it before he did. Where was the first atomic bomb tested? Well, President Truman was still in Europe on July 16, 1945, when the first ever successful atomic bomb was detonated. This atomic bomb was plutonium-based. As uranium-235 was too difficult to extract and could not be wasted, the bomb testing was named the Trinity, Trinity Nuclear Test, and the bomb itself was known as the Gadget. It was tested at Alamogordo, New Mexico at 5.29 a.m. There was a massive ball of fire that went over 40,000 feet into the air and was equivalent to 20,000 tons of TNT. The atomic bomb vaporized the steel tower it was dropped from and turned 800 yards of sand into glass the same day. The USS Indianapolis was sailing to Tinian with the required nuclear components to be placed on the B-29 Super Fortress planes. Atomic bombing of Hiroshima, Japan, and Nagasaki, Japan. Why did the United States drop the atomic bomb on Japan? It was to spare the Japanese people from utter destruction that the ultimatum of July the 26th was issued at Potsdam. Their leaders promptly rejected that ultimatum. If they do not now accept our terms, they may expect a rain of ruin from the air the like of which has never been seen on this earth. Well, President Truman had a tough decision to make. Would he drop the most destructive bomb known to man and kill thousands of innocent people, or would he send in the military to fight the war on the ground, as well as drop thousands of bombs on, on Japan? This would mean thousands of Americans and allied military would lose their lives, as well as innocent civilians. Part of the pressure was the United States would eventually find out about the atomic bomb and this could blow up having known the war would be ended with one bomb and no more loss of Allied forces' lives. The other thing causing problems was worrying about the Soviets causing the Japanese country to be divided into a communist country like Germany, where one part of the country is communist and the other is not. So a decision had to be made, and it was. So, who dropped the atomic bomb? Well, General, General Carl Spatz, commander of the Strategic Air Forces in Europe, is ordered on July 25, 1945, to bomb one of the targets, which were Hiroshima, Kokura, Nagata, or Nagasaki, as soon as weather permitted, permitted them to after August 3, 1945. So, on August 6, 1945, 75 years ago today, the Enola Gay, piloted by Colonel Tibbets, dropped the first atomic bomb named Little Boy on Hiroshima, Japan, at 8.15 a.m. The atomic bomb was dropped from a height of 31,000 feet, and the altimeter on the bomb caused it to detonate at just 1,900 feet above the ground. Little Boy was a gun-type bomb using uranium-235, and when it detonated over Hiroshima, the blast and fallout spread over four miles. Within seconds, 70,000 people were killed, buildings and people were vaporized. Three days later, on August 9, 1945, the second and final atomic bomb named Fat Man to ever be used in war was dropped on Nagasaki, Japan at 11.02 a.m. 
B, the B-29 Super Fortress named Boxcar, piloted by Major Sweeney, dropped the atomic bomb. Fat Man was a plutonium-based atomic bomb and detonated at 1,650 feet above the city. The bomb unleashed the equivalent of 22,000 tons of TNT. This atomic bomb was much more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. However, the mountainous regions of Nagasaki prevented the further spread of the nuclear fallout from the atomic bomb. Where the fallout from the atomic bomb on Hiroshima spread about four miles, the one on Nagasaki spread just over two miles. So how many people were killed by the atomic bomb? It's estimated that over 70,000 people died instantly when the bomb detonated over Hiroshima, Japan. A total estimate of 90,000 to 140,000 people died due to the bombing, which is close to 39% of the total population. And around 39,000 people died instantly from the atomic bomb on Nagasaki, Japan. And a total of 60 to 80,000 people died due to the bombing. It is believed many people continue to die months later due to the atomic bombings on each city and many other diagnoses such as cancer, leukemia, birth defects, and other medical issues were a direct result of the bombings. So how does the atomic bomb work? The simplest explanation of this without getting too technical because I'm not a science person is a process called fission. This is a process of hitting a uranium-235 atom at a high speed by a neutron. This causes the uranium-235 atoms to split into two to three new neutrons, releasing a massive amount of energy. Scientists also discovered plutonium while learning to extract uranium-235, which was much easier to produce. To make the chain reaction happen, they needed to find a way to prevent the neutrons from escaping and thus being a dud. They found the best shape to contain the neutrons was within a sphere and coated it, and they coated it with mirrors so that that would cause the neutrons to deflect and continue the chain reaction. Scientists created a gun-like mechanism within the atomic bomb container that allowed two uranium-235 or plutonium spheres to combine, which essentially sets off the atomic bomb after it reaches what is called supercritical mass. The atomic bomb Little Boy contained 140 pounds of uranium-235, which created an explosion equal to 20,000 tons of TNT, and the atomic bomb Fat Man only needed 14 pounds of plutonium to be more powerful than uranium-filled bomb, and it exploded with an explosion equal to 22,000 tons of TNT. So I'd just like to say, in conclusion, you know, our prayers and our condolences go out to all the friends and families, anyone that lost their lives or were affected by this sad day in history. It ended a long, drawn-out war that resulted in the loss of over 85 million people, or 3% of the world population at that time. And it was considered the deadliest war in history, and we can only hope we never see such a war again. Okay, I, ho I hope you enjoyed this article or this video. And if you would, hit that subscribe button below, hit the little bell, and also feel free if you'd like to donate using the Patreon link below, a dollar a month or whatever you can afford. Um, it helps us out greatly and we will continue to publish more videos and more articles in the future. Thank you and have a great day.